Hi everyone, it's Daisy and our project today is the Poison Dart Frog. I chose this project for its brilliant colors and its patterns and I wanted to treat this project in a different way from realism, make it more contemporary, possibly even graphic. So we'll be using the patterns on the frog's body and extending them into the background. It will be done in watercolors with some pencil color highlights so stick with us and do this project, see how you like it. We're going to start the drawing with our eye. And we're going to pay attention to where we want to place the eye in relation to the balance of the body. The eye is a circle and we'll place it right at the upper right hand corner. We'll proceed to creating the bone around the eye which helps us understand the structure of the eye itself and how the light and darks work around the eye. We'll use these lines to project the nose to the front, followed by the second eye to the rear. This will be carried down towards the backbone line. We'll complete our nose and then move down to creating the mouth. Turn inside and set the stage for the arms to come in. We'll start with the shoulder. Moving out the, to the forearm and the lower arm and keeping it simple and only drawing the arms for now and not the toes. We'll go to those later. Study the negative space and place the a dot to where the knee would, for the back left leg would be. Continue to go drawing the balance of the leg by play, paying attention to the creases and the way that the muscle wraps around the leg and how the leg folds into itself, creating multiple joint and fold lines for us to create. Close the back of the frog's body and go to draw the right rear leg. Again, I study the negative spaces a lot, create those shapes. So after making the upper body, I'll go to the foot and I'll draw that in looking at the negative space between the two and then complete it by drawing the lower leg for the frog. So this completes my back legs. Move up to the front and create the front right leg for the frog. Once the legs are in place, I'm going to go draw the toes. I always draw toes by creating a singular line and not creating each detail as I go. So I'll place them as I see them in terms of position and distance from each other. If I'm satisfied with my lines, I go ahead and proceed to creating the inside lines for each of the toes. So my left front arm for the frog is done, moving to the back left leg's toes. Again, studying negative spaces, single lines, just projecting where the toes are laid out as per my reference picture, and just drawing them one after the other. And then completing them by drawing the inside lines and connecting them to each other and to the foot itself. Going to the back right leg for the frog, coming to the front right leg to the, of the frog.
Once this is done, I'm going to start creating the patterns that I see on my reference picture. Starting at the head, paying attention to negative spaces, how much space should I leave, how far in should I curve, all those details. So one at a time, one line at a time, don't rush into anything. I'll work my way from the head and move the pattern system all the way down, the arms, the legs, the back, and complete that. Once all of my designs are done, I'm going to stretch the pattern to the background and create it to where I have almost like a camouflage landscape. As I create this pattern, my mind is working towards as to how I'm going to plan to get to create a camouflage effect, yes, but at the same time define the frog. It seems to contradict each other, but at the same time, it would make for a very interesting concept. Consider techniques such as these uh, when you have to make a composition that you're working on unique. There's the, a lot that any subject might bring to you. Pick up on lines that seem interesting to you and use those lines to dominate the composition. As in my case, I'm taking the pattern off the frog and just using it all over the paper space. The coloring part of this project will be put into time-lapse but to explain it briefly, we'll go into 
watercolor washes. The first one will be a light yellow. I'll take a tissue paper and wipe away the brightest highlights of the frog on the leg and anywhere else I see it. I'll do a second wash on the yellow, which will be a deeper yellow. Then I'll bring in the brown and I'll put it to the spots and the patterns on the frog's body. Finally, I'll bring in my acrylic marker in black and I'll define all the darkest areas on the frog and give it some more of highlights using my goldenrod Prismacolor pencil. I hope you enjoy this project and let's take it away.